about 6,000 people in Milwaukee were directly employed in manufacturing and selling and transportation of beer. It was the third largest industry for our city and now kind of with the stroke of a pen, it's outlawed. For a lot of the smaller breweries, they didn't have the capacity, they didn't have the means, the resources to continue and they folded. But the large breweries were able to switch to other products. In 1854, my great-grandfather came to New York and then eventually came to Milwaukee and bought a defunct brewery from the Best Brothers. That was a family-founded Pabst Brewery. Everybody knew that there were prohibitionary uh, movements in the United States. From the very beginnings, 1850, they fought prohibition one way or another, or knew it was out there. Miller survived first because they prepared. They saw that prohibition might actually go national, so they prepared. They began producing non-alcoholic beverages in about 1917. This is a bottle cap for Miller root beer. They started experimenting with non-alcoholic beer and also soda. So by the time Prohibition was enacted, they were ready Miller's orange soda. Pabst became number one in the country in 1874, and them, Schlitz, and Budweiser sort of traded places over the next hundred years. These are the items that were popular for Pabst during Prohibition. Pabst at cheese. It was so much like Velveeta, because they copied it, that Kraft sued and won and ended up owning Pabst et Cheese. The Schlitz company spun off another company that made chocolate. But in the back of it are a bunch of recipes for things you can make with their chocolate products. By all accounts, the chocolate was actually pretty terrible. Uh, and so it, it did not do particularly well. Blatt's made different types of soda. And then real popular was the malt extract because you could make beer with it. Rumor has it they even put a warning label on the can for a while that said, whatever you do, don't do the following three things or this would turn into beer. Flats also produced gum. The other thing that a lot of these companies ran into is that the margins were much smaller. They weren't making nearly the profits and it was also very hard for them to switch their marketing. So they barely made their money back and then the best tonic. If a woman was feeling a little down, this could help pick you up. If you were a little too high up, it could help bring you down. It helped with all kinds of things. They were pretty sure beer would come back, and so they kept the brewery running. They invested very little in it, but it was still functioning in 1933 when Prohibition ended, and they were able to begin producing beer again without much trouble. Miller, as the other big brewers, believed that prohibition was temporary, that it wasn't going to last forever. And uh, it probably lasted just long enough to scare the heck out of them. 